Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 3 is coming out? You betcha! Hey you Prodigy's Pod Charles here, and in this video I'll be showing an in-depth analysis of the reveal trailer for Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 3. Prodigies, I am so excited to share what I've found because the Meatly Games has generously packed this trailer with tons of hints. Be sure to watch this all the way through because this analysis will blow your mind. If you would like more horror game theories, remember to subscribe and tap that bell, as on top of the many theories I've already made, there will be more to come. And just before we begin, if you can't watch this video all the way through right now, remember to tap add to and select watch later to save your progress, or just do it for fun. For those of you who might be interested in Bendy and are not sure what the hype is about, the game is basically about a cartoonist who returns to his workplace after 30 years. When he returns, he fixes an ink machine which seems to awaken an ink demon called Bendy. He then finds his way to the music department where his former colleague, a music director, tries to sacrifice him to Bendy for some kind of crazy cult. But Bendy gets away, only to find one of the animations roaming around the studio in a 3D form. Now the trailer for chapter 3 shows a lot of information about what's to come. Let's start with the animation that plays at the beginning. This is the first time fans have had a chance to see what the Bendy cartoons look like but it also tells us a few things about the story. The first major thing is that it confirms the name of the studio as Joey Drew Studios. We've already seen this in chapter two of the music department banner, but there have been many who have told me that the studio is called Silly Vision for some reason. We can also see that the name of the cartoon is Tombstone Picnic. This is interesting because it seems to be a nod to the coffins that we've been seeing around the studio, especially at the end of chapter one and at the beginning of chapter two. When I first saw this, I thought that the halo we saw in the announcement trailer might have been a symbol for those who had died at the studio rather than for an Alice Angel reference, but more on that later. We can be certain for now that this confirms some kind of theme of death in this game, which is quite appropriate for a horror game. Next on the opening slate for the cartoon, it says that it is a Bendy cartoon. This confirms that Joey Drew's series of cartoons didn't have a particular name surrounding just Bendy. Kind of like in the Looney Tunes. People would see the opening slate featuring Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck and know that they belonged to the Looney Tunes. Even if only one of these characters would be featured when the cartoon started, there would still be other characters from the franchise in these cartoons. So, perhaps we might see more cartoons which feature more characters such as Alice Angel, especially considering that she was rising in popularity at the studio. Finally, the opening slate mentions that the cartoons are written and directed by Joey Drew. Nothing too surprising there, but I wonder if this is the source of saltiness that Sammy Lawrence expresses for writing songs for the cartoons. He doesn't seem to get any special recognition on these opening credits, and they don't seem to be closing credits, but that would seem like a strange thing to be upset about considering that he works for the studio and the entire place gets credited. Spoiler alert, the animation cuts off abruptly and the film flashes out, which seems to agree with Wally Frank's message in chapter one that states that the cartoons aren't getting done on time anymore. So this could be the reason why we don't see closing credits in this cartoon. The cartoon opens up with Bendy strolling in the graveyard and he suddenly gets attacked by a skeleton that tries to grab him from underneath the ground. This might actually be pretty important for the game, but we will cover this a bit later. Shortly after, Bendy tries to get Boris's attention, and you can see from both characters' expressions, postures, and actions that they are not the biggest buddies. This might be the first hint that shows that Bendy and Boris might actually be rivals in Joey Drew's cartoons. We have had theories in the past stating that Bendy might have killed Boris, and this is exactly the kind of crazy fooling around that I expected the characters might have gotten themselves into in the real world. Interestingly, this little snippet might support that Bendy wrote the message, who's laughing now on the wall near Boris's corpse in chapter one. At the end of the cartoon, Bendy is approached by someone as indicated by the shadow that grows taller on the boulder that he leans against. Bendy is visibly frightened by the short encounter with the skeleton, but it seems that whoever approaches Bendy makes him feel safe. This shadow also looks like it could belong to a human, so is it possible that Joey Drew inserted himself into his cartoons? In older cartoons like Tom and Jerry and Peanuts featuring Charlie Brown, adults would tend to not appear on camera at all or have their heads cut off. So perhaps a similar theme is happening here. A more sinister interpretation of this is that Joey Drew somehow used ink magic to enter his own cartoons to bring them into the real world. This might actually be the point where Bendy's dream might have come true. It is at this point that the animation cuts out. Then we get into the really good stuff, the gameplay. Please keep in mind that whenever I mention Henry, we 
or us, I'm referring to the character whose perspective we see through in the trailer. There could be a chance that it isn't the player at all, but I doubt it. Now first off we can see that Ink Bendy will actually be chasing us, just like I confirmed in my teaser analysis videos. While we do get more access to more weapons, I have a suspicion that we will be without them and defenseless for the most part. We can also see bacon soup cans strewn all over the floor that we run across, which means that they might play a bigger part than they did in previous chapters. Perhaps there's a chance that we could trip over them, or more likely, they will be there as a sort of health pack to help us get through the new chase scenes. There might even be harder enemy encounters. But what's this on the ground? There seems to be a strangely shaped panel on the ground that looks like a lower air duct. Are there more enemies that will attack us from the floor? This is why I thought that the animation might have been hinting towards the gameplay. There could be more ink monsters, or Bendy himself, that try to trip or trap Henry on his way through the studio. Which is really spoopy. Imagine trying to run away from something only to be trapped in one spot. It reminds me a bit of running from the neighbor in Hello Neighbor. There is also a bendy cutout by the corner, and just for those who missed the chapter 3 teaser image analysis, this might confirm that the bendy cutout jump scares will return. They might also play a part in someone else's rituals, but these ones do not seem to have any transmutation circles or magical glyphs associated with them like in chapter 2. Continuing on with the chasing, it does seem like there are more obstacles to dodge while we are running away from our enemies. There appear to be areas in the floor that are flooded with ink designed to slow us down. This means that there is certainly a difficulty increase here. We will have to stay on our toes and jump around all of these obstacles to get through each stage. It's interesting to see that the game has introduced more platforming style elements, kind of like in Mario to spice things up. Provided that this is not just a cinematic, it seems that there is also a feature allowing us to quickly look behind us. Fans of the Outlast series would be familiar with this feature, as you would be able to quickly see if someone or something was chasing you with a quick press of a button. Perhaps it is more important than ever to be able to track our enemies in order to escape from them. Unlike in Chapter 2 where we could easily just take one linear path to get away from them. Given that we can hear some pretty heavy breathing sounds during the clip, we might have to rely on our ears as well as our eyes to make it through. Just listen to this breathing sound. It's almost like we can hear Bendy breathing down our necks which is pretty darn spoopy. I also considered that this could be the sound of machinery clashing or falling, but given what's happening in this scene, it sounds like something living is near Henry. It reminds me a bit of the sound that you hear in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 when listening out for animatronics when you open the doors. That being said, it looks like the searchers are back. Though this one seems to have a larger head than what I remember in Chapter 2, and it's really fast, so it seems like we'll be introduced to much quicker enemies in Chapter 3. This may also fall back on us not having any weapons. With faster enemies, we'll be forced into a state of panic way more often. We can also see a vent above this character who dashes by, which may be a reference to the vents that Sammy mentions Ink Bendy travels through in Chapter 2. In Chapter 1, we hear similar sounds as we did in Chapter 2 when Bendy skitters around the vents, so it seems possible that we'll have enemies jumping out at us not only from the floor, but also from above us. We can see more of these vents throughout the halls that we run through, including one in front of a Who's Laughing Now message splattered across the wall here. Wait a minute. Who's laughing now? This is the same message that was written near Boris's corpse in Chapter 1. We know that Boris makes a return at the end of Chapter 2, so if this is actually Boris, the 3D cartoon, this might be a message signalling Boris's return to seek revenge on whoever put him out of commission in the first place. If someone killed Boris and wrote Who's Laughing Now on the wall near his corpse, this could very well be his witty reply to being brought back to life. It seems that there is no avoiding us interacting with Boris in some deep way or learning more about him in the next chapter. Let's go back to that quick searcher that we see for a moment, because if we watch on for a bit longer, it looks like someone is chasing it. Is it another searcher? This dark character does seem to have a more slender and human-like appearance. And is that hair I see? Wait a minute. Is this Alice Angel? It looks like the character takes a brief moment to lean on the wall and take a breather before continuing the chase, which is something we haven't seen someone like Ink Bendy do. This character could be anything, but the way the trailer was edited, this character gets heavily blurred out, and I think that it's intentional to hide their identity from us. It's just way too suspicious for it to not be Alice for me right now. 
but do let me know your thoughts. On the left we can see what looks like ventilation fans, meaning that we are definitely going deeper on the ground to explore the studio. These fans are probably in place to provide oxygen to workers in this area. I don't see these fans being more than ornaments to add to the atmosphere, but there is a chance that we may have to regulate oxygen levels at the studio. This is a bit of a stretch, but it gives me Sister Location Custom Light vibes since we lost our vision when we got near Ink Bendy in Chapter 2. In a similar manner, oxygen running low in this area in Chapter 3 may cause Henry to black out. While these fans may still just be ornamental, check out these V-belts. V-belts are mechanical contraptions that were used in the old days to provide power to machines. This might indicate that we have another puzzle where we restore power to the studio. If so, this power could be used to fix the lift that we see at the end of Chapter 2 the ventilation system, or perhaps there is a small elevator that gets us to whatever is up on the second floor of this stage. And yes, it does appear that there are multiple floors here, with enemies swarming both of the floors that we see in the trailer. There is also ink by the Bendy cutout. For those who didn't see my chapter 3 teaser image analysis, this could hint towards the character that moves the Bendy cutouts making a return. Will we get to find out who they are though? The general agreement for now is that it is Sammy Lawrence, but we've seen that he was eliminated by Bendy in Chapter 2. Does this signify his return, or did one of the searchers or Boris really move that cutout around? More importantly, gears are confirmed. We saw heaps of gears in the Chapter 3 announcement trailer, and that odd broken box that we also saw in the Chapter 3 teaser image might not be a place to hide, but might actually be a box containing gears which will help some kind of machine work. Perhaps a lift or a power generator? We will have to wait and see, but it's interesting to see clues like these and the V-bands coming together with things that we've seen in previous chapters. Perhaps Boris will actually help us and need us to clear the area so we can fix these boxes with his trusty wrench. We'll just have to wait and see. Perhaps we will act as bait and lure any enemies in the area away. Now prodigies, get ready for this because this is possibly the most interesting thing I've seen in the trailer so far. If you pause at just the right moment on the upper floor of the area where the chase is happening, right when the shadowy figure passes by, you can see what looks like a bendy statue. Is this possibly a shrine that was used by the cult formed at the studio to praise and worship bendy? Could this be a new place for the workers to provide their offerings? Prodigies, this is huge. While it could just be a decoration, there are way too many hints throughout the story so far that suggest a cult formed at the studio. This might be our first piece of solid evidence to confirm that. I wonder if we will need to interact with it in some way. Bendy seems way more aggressive in this chapter, so perhaps that serves as the source of his power and we need to break it. And now, the part that shocked everyone. The Little Miracle Stations. This seems to be a hiding area where Henry can stealth his way away from enemy characters, kind of like lockers in Outlast. The stations have Halo symbols painted on them, which may also serve as a reference to the Halo from the Chapter 3 trailer. This Halo might really be just a symbol for safety and not actually for Alice Angel at all, but at the same time it could be even more of a hint that Alice Angel might make an appearance in Chapter 3. Maybe the Little Miracle Stations were put there by Alice. What do you think? Even though these Little Miracle Stations also serve as puns for places of safety, it looks like Bendy can still get to us if he notices that we try to hide in there. On the other hand, the halo symbol might be a repellent that stops Bendy from getting to Henry, but considering that there have been way more complicated symbols in the game so far, it could be a bit anticlimactic if a drawing of a halo scared Bendy away without much reasoning. Perhaps there will be some conflict between Bendy and Alice that will escalate in the next chapter. Speaking of Bendy, he is way more agile. Bendy must have taken some hints from Sonic the Hedgehog since chapter 2 because it looks like he has a mean need for speed and he's gotta go fast. This makes me wonder, since we've fixed the ink machine and got the ink flowing again, are we accidentally making Bendy stronger throughout our adventure? If so, the ending of our journey is looking more frightening and grim for Henry. The end of the trailer features some wonderfully creepy singing, and it sounds as if this could be Alice Angel or Susie Campbell. Another nod to Alice Angel, sure, but will we get to see her? Despite the little miracle stations, I think that we've been getting so many hints for her that we will come across her in Chapter 3, or at least some more in-depth Susie Campbell recordings. And of course, the most important part of the trailer, 
the moment we've all been waiting for. We find out that Chapter 3 will be released in September of 2017. Remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more interesting horror game theories and secrets. If you love horror game theories, be sure to check the description for a link to all of the theories and secrets and prodigies. I really hope that these videos help you to expand on how you think so it can help you with your thinking in your daily lives. See ya! I see that you listened to me when I asked you to watch all the way through earlier in the video. Well done! You get some bonus points. Here are some things that I noticed in the Chapter 3 reveal trailer, but I figured they'd be a little bit of a stretch. The first is that there seem to be what look like more footprints across the floor that Henry runs across. We know that there were secret footprints around the boarded up ink machine room in Chapter 1. So will we come into contact with the character who did this? Also, there appear to be supply cabinets to the right in the chase scene. What could they hold? Close inspection shows that they could hold general supplies for machine maintenance, such as oil. But I'm not sure what it says. If it is for mechanical maintenance, then it could confirm that Boris will have a bigger role in fixing or breaking the machinery than expected. If we need to collect oil to help Boris, he may use it to fix the machinery around the studio. If we need to collect oil because Boris is breaking the machinery, we may need to use it to fix things for ourselves. Remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more cool and interesting horror game videos.